Okay, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to extract names or domains from a list of email addresses. So I've got various examples here where the emails are given to me in different formats. You can see the format here, last name, comma, first name, and then the email address. Here we've got first name, dot, last name, and then the email address. And then the third one we have first name, last name, but with no delimiter between the names. The only way I can distinguish between the first name and the last name is with this capital letter here. So we'll start by extracting the full name. And the easiest way to do this is you use something called flash fill. And to use flash fill, you have to type in an example of what you want to extract. And you must do that in the column adjacent to your email addresses. Now, what I can do with that cell selected, I can then go up to the data tab on my ribbon. And in the data tools group, there's a flash fill button. You can see it there. And if I press that, it will repeat that pattern down the column, extracting the first and last names. Now, if I undo that, you can also use a shortcut key for flash fill. With, so with the cell selected that contains the example, you use control E. And it does exactly the same thing. And I'll delete those. The same would work if I just wanted to extract the actual email address. So if I copy the email address portion of this and paste it in here, and then use flash fill, it will extract the email address in each of the rows. Delete that. Now the same would also work if I just wanted to extract the domain. So I would select the domain part of the email address, paste it in here, and Control E. And you can see if I scroll down here, it's done exactly that. Now let's go to example two. This is pretty much the same. If I'm using Flash Fill, if I wanted to extract the name, I'll just type an example of what I want to extract and then control E. So that's going to work pretty much the same, whatever format the email addresses come in. But say you wanted to extract the email addresses with formulas, and then at least this column will be linked to the original email address column. So I'll try and extract the name from the email address using a formula. So I can start with a function called left. And what left does is extract a specified number of characters from the left side of a text string. So the first argument is text. And the number of characters is the number of characters you want to extract. So for John, that would be four characters. Now that works for John, but if I copy this down, it doesn't work for Sarah's because Sarah has five characters in her first name. So what I need is a way of finding the position of that full stop. Now I can do that with a function called find. So I want to find a full stop. That's my find text. And I want to find it within this text here. So five is the position of the full stop. Now I only want to return four characters. So it would be that result minus one. So I can take that formula and use it within the left function to extract the first name. Now, if you're in Excel 365, it's a lot easier. You can use a function called text before. Now the text argument is asking for the text string that you want to extract characters from, so that's A2. And then my delimiter in this example is a full stop. So I want to extract all the characters before the delimiter, the full stop. If I copy that down, that works just like it does in this column. Now, if I want to extract the last name, it's a little bit trickier. Essentially, the last name is the characters between the full stop and the at symbol. Now, probably what I would do, and there'll be a few ways you could do this, but I would, first of all, extract all the characters before the at symbol. So I can use the find function to find the position of that at symbol. Now, if I close the bracket and press return, it includes the at symbol. 
So what I'll do to exclude the at symbol is just put a minus one at the end of the find calculation. So now what I can do is I can return the text after the full stop. Now to do that, I can use the mid function. So the text I want to return characters from is returned by this formula. And the start number would be the position of the full stop. So I'd say find the position of the full stop within the text string returned by this formula. Close the bracket. And then the number of characters I want to return, well, we can just say 20 because we'd never want to return more than 20 characters. Now the text string includes the full stop. So I want to start returning characters, one character to the right of the full stop. So I just need to make a little change here to the find calculation. Press enter and I get the last name. Now, if you're an Excel 365, this is a lot easier. You'd start by using text before. So this is the text we're extracting characters from and the delimiter would be the at symbol. So we're extracting all characters before the at symbol. And then I want to extract the characters after the full stop. So I'd say text after. This is the text I'm extracting characters from and I'm extracting characters after the full stop. And that gives me the last name. Now, if you wanted to return the full name with a space between the first and last name, that's very easy to achieve. What I'll do is I'll just freeze panes and scroll over a little bit. So what I'd need to do first of all is extract all of the characters to the left of the at symbol. So we've already covered this, but as a reminder, that would be left. This is the text I'm extracting characters from. And the number of characters is returned by the find function. So I'm finding the at symbol in this text. And then I'm saying minus one. Or you could use text before. If you have Excel 365. Then what we can do is use the substitute function. So the text that I'm extracting characters from is returned by the left function. And the old text, the character I want to replace or substitute is the full stop. And the new text is going to be a space. Works just as well here. I would say substitute. The text that I want to substitute characters in is returned by the text before function. The old text is a full stop and the new text is a space. Okay, let's move to the last example. Now in this example, things are a little bit trickier because we don't have a delimiter between the first and the last name. The only pattern that I can observe there is the fact that the last name starts with a capital letter. So somehow we need to find the position of that second capital letter in these text strings. That is, if we want to separate the first name from the last name. Now the way I'm going to do this will only work in Excel 365. Now the first thing I need to tell you about is the character function. Now if I type in character 65, it returns a capital A. If I return character 90, it returns a capital Z. So characters 65 through to characters 90 are all the letters of the alphabet capitalized. Now I want to return all of those capital letters. And the way we can do that is with the sequence function. So the number of rows I want is 26. There's 26 letters in the alphabet. I want one column and my start number is 65. If you remember 65 was equivalent to a capital A. Now I don't need to use the step argument so I can just close the bracket there and press enter and that gives me the letters of the alphabet. Now what I need to do is search within this text string to see if any of these capital letters are found. 
And if it is found, I also need to know its position within the text string. Now to do that, we can use the find function and find helpfully is case sensitive. So I want to find any of these capital letters within this text. And my start number is going to be two because I want to ignore the first capital letter. Now if I press enter, it returns a whole load of errors, but it does find an S in the fifth position within the text string. Now I only want to return that five, so I need to get rid of these errors. And to do that, I could use the if error function. So the value of the values returned by this find function, and the value of error is just going to be an empty text string. So two speech marks, nothing in between. So now that gets rid of all the errors. To just return the five, I could use the max function. So now it tells me that that second capital letter is in position five within this text string. If I copy this down, you can see it does exactly the same for the other email addresses. So now all I need to do is use the left function to return the first name. So the text I'm extracting characters from is in A2. And the number of characters I want to return is calculated by this formula. But I need to say minus one because I don't want to include that second capital letter. Now the last name, what we need to do is extract from the second capital letter up to the at symbol, but not including the at symbol. So I can start with the text before function. This is the text I'm extracting characters from, and the delimiter is the at symbol. Now I need to take this calculation here, which is calculating the position of the second capital letter. And I'm going to place all of this within the mid function. So I want to return text from the text returned by this, the text before formula, comma. The start number is returned by this calculation. And the number of characters is never going to be more than 20 characters. So then if I close the bracket and press enter, it will return the last name for each of these email addresses. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.